Fifty Cents and a Dream, Young Booker T. Washington Like any boy, Booker longed to play, run, and jump beneath the blue skies and bright sun. Most of all, he longed to learn. Booker dreamed of making friends with words, setting free the secrets that lived in books. The strange marks marched and danced across the page, making him smile and laugh with joy. But slaves like him were not allowed to read. A black boy caught with a book could be whipped or worse. When he walked his master's daughter to school, he carried her books, and his fingers would linger on each of the covers. He could feel magic seeping into his hands. Inside, the girl read along with her classmates, A, an apple, B, a bird. Booker stayed outdoors in the Virginia heat beneath the blue skies and bright sun. Staring through the window, he listened and dreamed. When freedom came, life was still hard. Booker's family moved from Virginia to West Virginia. He and his brothers joined their stepfather in working at a salt furnace. Deep in the Kanawha Valley, he shoveled, hauled, and packed. Later, at a coal mine in Malden, miners and machines drilled thousands of feet into the earth to reach the coal. It was hot, dangerous work for grown men, and even more so for boys like Booker. He had never seen such darkness. One day, his mother had a surprise, a spelling book just for him. Booker went to work on his ABCs, tracing the strange marks as they danced across the page. Soon, they began to make sense to him. A, an apple. B, a bird. At last, he could read. When a young man from Ohio came to town, Word of the wondrous stranger spread quickly from cabin to cabin. A colored man who could read. Folks loved to gather round after work and listen to him read the daily news. Young Booker listened too and dreamed. Each morning at dawn, Booker rose and hurried back to work. He shoveled, hauled, and packed, then raced to a school for Negroes. In a tiny crowded room, Booker studied his lessons, A, an apple, B, a bird. Booker listened, learned, and dreamed, but he wanted more. As a teenager, he heard talk of a wonderful school called Hampton Institute. Negroes could study writing there, along with farming, science, and many other things, and they could read all the books they wanted. Booker listened and dreamed. He had no idea where Hampton was or how he was going to reach it. He just knew that he had to get there. For a year and a half, Booker worked and saved, dreaming of school all the while. He still had very little money and only a few tattered threads to wear. His friends and family didn't have much, a nickel, a quarter, a handkerchief, but they gave him what they had. His older neighbors had spent most of their days in slavery. They told young Booker that they had never imagined one of their own going off to a boarding school. Booker listened and carried their dreams with him. He walked most of the 500 miles to Hampton Institute. It was a journey of many days through the mountains of Virginia to reach the sea. The wind nipped at his weary bones, and the hard ground made his feet ache, but he walked on. His money had run out by the time he reached Richmond, about 82 miles from Hampton. He was so tired and hungry that he could barely take another step. The big city seemed scary and confusing. So many shadows and not a friend in sight. Without a single penny in his pocket, 
Booker walked the streets until after midnight. As he stared at food stands piled high with fried chicken and sweet-smelling fruit pies that made his mouth water, his empty stomach rumbled as loud as approaching thunder. What he wouldn't give for a bite of bread or a sip of milk. Trudging beneath the bleak skies and bitter cold, he could have given up. Then he imagined the library at Hampton, magic and mystery lining its shelves. From deep inside, he heard a voice urging him to press on. He listened and dreamed. He found work unloading a ship and earned enough to buy breakfast. The men grunted and sang as they packed, pulled and hauled. Their voices reminded Booker of his days in the salt mine, of the friends and family he had left far behind. He toted, lifted, and stacked until his back hurt and his thin clothes grew damp with sweat. Days passed. Little by little, he saved enough to finish his journey. When he reached Hampton at last, the sight of the large brick building filled his insides with light, with 50 cents in his pocket and a dream in his soul. Booker felt the magic welcome him in. The cost of school was $70 a year, far more than 50 cents. Booker paid his way by working as a janitor. Once again, he rose at first light, sweeping, cleaning, and hauling before heading to class. Still, he did not earn enough, but his hard work inspired others to help him, and Booker carried their dreams with him. Never before had he eaten regular meals or slept in a bed between two sheets. Life at Hampton was all he wanted and more. For Booker, his teachers were the greatest marvels of all. They were smart and kind, and they taught their students to share with others the wisdom they had gained. Maybe some students would go on to build schools of their own. Booker had come a long way from A, an apple, B, a bird. But even after 500 miles and a dream that came true, Booker's journey was just beginning. Sitting at his desk with a stack of books beside him, he listened and dreamed. The End <laughs>